Hey y'all, welcome once again. This is MJ here, Just Plain Fun, and we are going to do a second installment of a Stuff You Should Know video regarding, of course, Stanley hand planes and other Stanley tools like those number 80 scrapers you see right there. The main purpose of the video is to help folks out when they're buying hand plane parts, so whether you're buying them for me or if you're looking for them on eBay. So for example, let's say you had a number 80 scraper and you needed one of these screws for it and you weren't 100% sure this is important. Do you have the old style, which is going to be this one with the smaller diameter? Or do you have the newer style that's going to be this one with the fatter diameter or the larger diameter? And you can see the difference there. That hole right there doesn't really matter. There are, I'm pretty sure, some screws that have the larger diameter that don't have the hole. So that's not what's important, but that diameter does matter. And incidentally, your blade deflection screw is also larger. It's also the same diameter as the ones for the blade lock however your blade deflection is not going to have this shoulder on it in order to help it and as a side note i get numerous requests for scraper blades for number 80s as well as 81s and some other scrapers uh, you know the 12s 12 and a halfs etc and i often do not have those because they are pretty hard to find so what most folks do is they'll just cut up an old saw blade so just consider that and you want to get a nice thick section of the saw blade and just put an edge on that or put a burr on that and away you go. And speaking of hard to find parts, this is a number eight bench plane and this one is a type six, but the type five through type eight planes will all fit, you know, especially like you're talking about a number eight and these frogs are exceedingly hard to find. And so this is just basically a public service announcement. If you find a number eight, type five through type eight, out in the wild and it has a broken frog, I'm going to strongly encourage you to not buy it, no matter how cheap it is. Unless it has some other good parts on it that you want to take for something else. But don't buy a number eight, number, excuse me, type five through type eight with the intention of restoring it if it has a broken frog. And if you do happen to find a serviceable frog for these, I promise you can make a very pretty penny when you go to sell it. Remember, our goal here is to help folks find the right part. And sometimes it's not always about finding the right part. Sometimes it's about finding a good suitable sub in case you can't find the right part or if you don't want to spend the money on the right part. So these are number 78 lever caps right here. I've got a made in England here. I've got, this is actually a craftsman or a sergeant. And you can tell because that hole is so much wider. And incidentally, the screw that goes into that is wider, of course, as well. These are actually kind of weak. There's not a lot of metal right here. So I see these getting broken a lot. And I have folks reach out to me and they want to buy this lever cap because unfortunately these get broken a lot. So Stanley kind of had a superior design, which the later ones had this little beef up right here. This is a super early one right here. As you can see, it's got the B casting on it. And so that's the first thing is know your brand. So you make sure that you get the right lever cap. And I've had incidents with that lately. And the second thing is a compatibility thing. So this is the lever cap for a number 40 scrub plane. And the threads are the same between the number 40 and then your number 78. And even this made in England, even though it's made you know across the pond, it still has the same threading. And so that's good. But the important thing here is that if you're talking about finding the, the most correct part, as you can see, the scrub plane screw is longer. And so this little 78 screw will work on a scrub plane. It's just going to be inserted. It's going to be tightened down further in order to get the tension that you want on your scrub plane. Or on your scrub plane blade, I guess I should say. And then just to tack on some more information on there, the screws for the number 39 series. So these, this is a dado plane, a dedicated dado plane, in case you're not familiar with these. And they came in various sizes from a quarter inch all the way up through, um, I believe it's one inch. And this screw right here, once again, diameter and thread pitch are the same. And so these are interchangeable with the number 78s and then with the number 40s. But as we just talked about, the 40 and 40 and a half is going to have a longer screw. But the cool thing about certain eras or certain um, vintages of this 39 is that they actually put the logo or the trademark that was out at that time so there's a stanley sweetheart so we know that one's from 
you know, 1920s or early 1930s. And then here, of course, is my favorite, the V logo. And I see some folks sometimes that they'll want to put one on their 78. It's also from the same era. And there's nothing wrong with that. If that's what you want to do, you want to trick out your 78, then by all means, hook that up. But just know that those, the ones that have the logos or trademarks on them are actually for the 39s. And I don't know of any other tool. If you guys know, by all means, comment. But I don't know of any other tool that actually used the, the logo or the trademark on the top of the screw or the head of the screw itself. And that screw is found in some other places, some other scrapers, such as the what, 81, 82. Those will have that screw or that same thread pattern as well. So that's one of those suitable substitute categories where the same screw can fit across multiple planes and can be used in multiple places. And while we're on the topic of the number 39, that's dedicated dado plane. If you decide that you're going to build, whether you're going to build one or you're going to build a whole set, just know in advance that these spurs or knickers right here come in different widths depending on the size of the dado plane or the size of the 39. So here you can see this is a 3 eighths right here. And then this one is a 3 quarters. And let me see if I can show you a little comparison side by side here. You can see that the spur or the knicker that goes in there is going to be a bit wider there and so i do sell those those spurs are knickers so if you need one you know by all means reach out these screws are also two different sizes so this one on the bottom is going to be smaller the one on the top is going to be larger and i'll go ahead and show you an example of that real quick you can see that screw is actually mostly recessed in there it's not very good lighting at all and then this screw like i said the diameter of the head is larger but this is a fun one if you decide that you want to hunt down all of these individual parts. It does get a little pricey, but it's worth it if you want to have that dedicated dado plane. There's another question that I've seen come up lately that I want to go ahead and cover. I've had folks ask if the number 45 components are compatible with the number 50. So this is a number 50. You can think of it as a miniature version of the 45 in some ways. Uh, a light combination plane and... Just so everybody is aware, the stem on these for the depth stops is significantly smaller, as you can see. So the answer to that one is no. The 45 and the 50 components are not compatible to include the spurs. And as you can see, this has got this style of spur on it on the number 50. and does not have the same the three prong or the three point knicker that or spur that's on the 45. So hardware not compatible between the 45 and the 50. However, some stuff can be moved over to the 46. And this right here is a partial 46 that I picked up. As you can see, once again, completely different style of spur right here. And the 45, the small depth stop has the stem offset to one side. Whereas the one that originally came with the 46, the stem is in the center instead. But if in a pinch, and let's say that you didn't want to fork over the dough to buy the depth stop that's unique to the 46. You could get by with the one from your 45 and still be able to get the job done. And incidentally, this 46 is another dado plane, just in case you're not familiar with that. So this one's got the skewed iron on it that's excellent for making dados, just like the 39 that we just talked about. There's another one that's come up lately when you're ordering a new yoke or Y adjusting lever for your frog. Let's say that you had one prong get broken off or something. And I do have a video for that covers removing and installing these as well as removing and installing the screw right here. So you can look through the, the list of videos and see that. But when you're ordering a new yoke, just make sure that you know what your size is. And if you've already got the pin out, then you can just go ahead and mic it and you can make sure that you're getting the right one. And the reason why I bring that up is because, as you can see, and I've covered this in another video too, but I know not everybody watches every single video that I put out as much as I wish y'all would. But as you can see, this one, the older style is going to be a thicker pin as opposed to the later one. And the yoke itself is a little beefier too, but they are compatible, but that pin is, is definitely different. So just be aware of that. And I want to cover the evolution of the 113 real quick, just because I've seen this come up a couple times lately as well. 
So the earliest ones would have had the wheel on the side for adjusting the depth of the blade there. As you can see, this whole plate right here moves up and down. And you've got your chip breaker screw that's resting in that opening right there. So this is going to advance your blade in and out. The earliest ones are going to have a solid wheel right here as opposed to the, I guess, mid-range ones, not later. But they started putting the holes in them. And so it's got a different style of blade. As you can see, it's got the chip breaker right there, or the chip breaker screw, rather. And like I talked about, it's going to sit right in there. And then it's got a different style of lever cap that has run away from the bench right now, or I would show it to you. And that is important because, and most important, because if you happen to need a handle for the, for that, this is the old school style, or excuse me, the old style. So it's just got the single hole in the center, which Stanley identified as a weak point on this because they were breaking. And so a lot of times when you find these out in the wild, if the handle is gone, chances are the frog, the top of the frog is going to be sheared off. It's going to be broken off right here. And I'm pretty sure I've talked about this in another video too. But it is important. You want to make sure that you get the right style of handle if you're ordering one. And make sure that your frog is actually serviceable and that it's going to accept the new handle. This right here is the later style. And as you can see, they went to a two-screw design to hold that on. And this is a lot stronger. These break much less frequently than the old ones. This one happens to be a wartime. So this is a later 113, close to... The time that they stopped making them and we know that because it's got this steel adjuster right here and then this particular design was unique to that style or that era and also some important things to know about the 113 is when you get into this later style right here and when you basically when you get away from the style with the single screw handle and then having the adjuster on the side and you go to the style that has the adjuster on the back we go to a more traditional, I guess you might say, uh, style of blade. However, the chip breaker is definitely different. And you can see this is the 113 chip breaker. So because that frog is so much longer than what you see on a regular bench plane, they had to put the opening for the yoke where it goes into the chip breaker. They had to put it higher on the chip breaker in order to be able to make that work. And then also, you don't have the bend there at the end on the chip breaker. This one sits much flatter on the end of the chip breaker. And that is important because this is this is a number three size blade. And this the blade will fit in either your number three size plane, your number five and a quarter, or your compass plane. However, the chip breaker is not compatible between them. And then also on the 113s, they went with a longer lever cap here. So this is gonna be the one for the 113 right here. On the older style previous or prior to this, so prior to the Sweetheart era, you would have had a C like this on the back, or you might have seen a 113 etched in the back, depending on what type it is and depending on the age. But the important thing is, again, number three, number five and a quarter, number 113. So the lever cap is longer for the same reason that the chip breaker is longer, because you want to be able to have that pressure sitting further down right here in order to keep the pressure where you need it on the blade. And that's important. If you ring me up and you say, hey, I want to get parts for my number 113, basically know what parts you need or, you know, know what style or let me know, send me pictures, whatever the case. And along those same lines of what we just talked about as far as the chip breakers being different for the 113, this is the difference between a chip breaker for a transitional and then the chip breaker for a regular Stanley Bailey bench plane. And the same thing, your opening for your yoke or your Y adjusting lever is going to be higher on the chip breaker for a transitional. While we're on the topic of transitional planes and specifically those chip breakers, I've had a couple of these incidents where I was helping folks troubleshoot and they thought maybe they had the wrong chip breaker. And we were trying to figure it out. I, I knew by the measurements that the chip breaker was correct, but it wasn't working and somebody had put a, basically a fix on there where they had raised the frog up in order to make it work. But we did some, some troubleshooting to figure out what was going on. And it turns out that someone had shaved a significant amount of the bottom of the sole off, probably to either flatten it or 
get rid of some cracking around the mouth or something like that but somebody had shaved a significant portion off the bottom of it and lo and behold the chip breaker would no longer adjust the blade the way that it needed to and they just basically couldn't make the plane work as it was so that's something to keep in mind as well if you happen to be somebody who's into transitional planes you want to keep an eye on that last but not least we want to talk about tote sizes and shapes as far as compatibility because remember our underlying goal is helping folks order the right parts get the right parts for the plane that they're rebuilding or working on and there is an issue with the older style of planes you know prior to a certain age where you can have compatibility issues with your totes so as you can see this one's a number four and a half end up tote minus the five and a quarter and it fits just fine on this old you know b casting number ten and a half here and this one has the forward lean as well but as you can see you know we've got the bases sitting even here and as you can see even with that forward lean it still sits a little bit higher and so even this one that is probably not a whole lot later a whole lot newer even this one is going to have compatibility issues with fitting underneath there and you can see where somebody has used it on a plane that is 100 percent from that lateral adjust lever digging into the top of that tote on some plane and this is a much later one this is from a, a sweetheart from you know 1920s and this one does not even have a hope of fitting in there you can see that one is just that's not going to work and that is important when you're out there you're rebuilding one of those older planes that is something that you want to watch out for especially when you have a lateral adjust lever the pre-lateral you might be might be able to get away with a little more but you add that lateral adjust lever and you're going to have potential compatibility issues and that my friends is a wrap i want to thank everybody for tuning in and i look forward to seeing you all around thanks